Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Ace Attorney Investigations 2. Previously... Uh, extraterritorial rights... Again? <laughs> but thankfully, Miles put a swift end to that immediately, and now we're able to get the president of Zhen Fa's testimony on his account of the shooting, and his near death at that, so... Let's get right into right into this. Where was I when the incident occurred? Ah, yes, the stage. Then, Rook and Knightley suddenly appeared and stood in front of me. After that, I heard a gunshot and a red balloon bursting. That's... pretty specific. A red balloon? Why would he be so fixated on a red balloon? And so, those two attempted to escort me into the plane. But then, the second gunshot. The bullet pierced through Rook's body and struck my bulletproof vest. If that's the case, then the president's a victim too, right? It was an assassination attempt. Mr. Rook just happened to get caught up in it, unfortunately. But isn't it strange? Why would the victim want to interrupt the investigation? Of course, if this becomes public, it would cause problems. I see. There's still some deep, dark secret behind this case, right? Certainly the President, and perhaps Knightley too, know of this secret. Without fail, I shall reveal it for all to see. This is interesting. There's something stinky here. Where was I when the incident occurred? Ah, uh, yes, the stage. Are you aware of just how serious this incident is? You naive man! Do you think I would be perturbed by that question? Of course, I am well aware that a coward attempted to shoot me. At the time, I was on the stage delivering my speech. Then, Rook and Knightley suddenly appeared and stood in front of me. Did you realize there was a shooter when they appeared in front of you? What was I doing at that time? Oh, yes, the speech. During my speech, I was in a euphoric state, a state of nothingness and enlightenment. So, you got nervous and you blanked out? Nay. I have not forgotten a single occurrence that transpired during my speech. I will hold you to that. When Rook and Knightley appeared in front of me, I was surprised. After that, I heard a gunshot and a red balloon bursting. A red balloon? You try my patience, Prosecutor. That was not my intention. I just want to make sure your recollections are reliable. Hmm. <laughs> there were balloons on both sides of the stage. Swelling red in the cloudy sky, as laid out in the security plan. I could have sworn one was orange. Let's look at the plan. Oh, yeah. I guess that's what those circular shapes with the pie slices in them are. I guess they were placed there tactically to block sight lines? The security plans. Ah, the one from the bag. They stepped in front of me just before the balloon burst. Oh. And so, those two attempted to escort me into the plane. Attempted to escort you. What actually happened? That's right. Attempted. Rook and Knightley raised their attache cases. That's the moment shown in Kay's photo. They led me towards the plane. But then, the second gunshot. What happened after the second gunshot? 
pitiful prosecutor. If you don't know that much, you're not fit for duty. <sighs> What's that supposed to mean? I grow wary of needless repetition. It should be quite obvious. Even you should know the path of the second bullet. The bullet pierced through Rook's body and struck my bulletproof vest. When the bullet hit, what condition was the victim in? Oh, he was truly a man among men. Still groaning from the bullet's impact, he grabbed hold of me and dashed into the plane. So you entered the plane along with the victim? I am to be protected. Rook was to protect me. That was his role. He speaks firmly. But it feels like he's just dodging the question, sir. He's a president. That's to be expected. <laughs> um, there doesn't seem to be anything out of place. Since he's also a victim, he wouldn't have a reason to lie, sir. So what he said should be nothing but the truth. On the contrary, there is one point that stands out to me as odd. Try to recall the state of the crime scene. Huh? Really? Sh show me the evidence! Perhaps I should review it one more time. Now let's confirm the color of the balloon. The Steel Samurai balloon is... white. Mostly. I mean... It's partially red, that's true, but... Um, look at the photo here. Okay, we can't see any balloons in these. Hmm. Yeah, I think I want to go with showing the white samurai balloon. Wait. He's saying that Rook and Knightley appeared and then a gunshot. What happened was, like, the first gunshot popped the balloon, then they stood in front of the president, then the bullet hit, um, Rook. But I want to go with the white balloon here. Objection! A red balloon burst. I'm afraid that's not the case. What? Please have a look at this piece of evidence. Can you see what has burst? No! Wow, what is that face? <laughs> this is... what, exactly? <laughs> it's the Steel Samurai, warrior of Neo Old Tokyo. You do well to remember it. If you wish to win the support of this nation's people, and don't forget the rival show, the Jam and Ninja! The balloon that was ruptured by the bullet was no ordinary red balloon. It was a steel samurai balloon. But according to the plans, there should have been two red balloons. It says so right here in the security plan. I don't see anything referring to the colors of balloons. It certainly looks like there are only two round balloons drawn here. Knightley, what is the meaning of this? Explain at once. Yes, sir. That steel samurai balloon was a last minute replacement. A replacement? That's what we were told. Seems that information didn't make it into make it to the president. We ran into a little trouble during setup last night. One of the balloons that we had repaired burst. So you scrambled to find a replacement? 
Exactly. We just happened to run into a guy manning a stand in the park. <laughs> I wonder who that was. He said he'd lend us the Steel Samurai's balloon. He was kind of a poser. Yeah, gee, I wonder who that was. A stand, a steel samurai balloon, and a poser. We pumped air into its red samurai pants to create a makeshift balloon. Oh! They tied off the top with rope, so it was... Oh! Huh. So the Steel Samurai Balloon looked just like an ordinary red balloon. Is that what you mean? Nightly, why was I not informed of this? Sir, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't think it was important enough to report. Couldn't you tell by just looking at it? <laughs> I did not notice it. So he mistook the Steel Samurai's pants for an ordinary balloon. The things this franchise makes me say. Good lord. Um, <clears throat> Was there a reason why you made that mistake? Oh. What now? A moment, please. I just remembered now. I could not see the balloon very well. You couldn't see it? Exactly. At the time, the, win the wind was too strong. The flags on the stage were fluttering wildly, and they obstructed my view. The flags? Did you not see the flags that were set up on both sides of the stage? I know where this is going. Due to the strong wind, they were waving about, just like this. <laughs> oh... Oh god, actually, what if he's actually telling the truth? That... Oh my god, that would let... Knightly have... Oh my god... Knightly would have a shot... The right angle to pierce both the flag and the balloon... In just the right way... Oh my god... <laughs> I think it is, Knightly... <laughs> so a strong wind was blowing at the time of the incident... The flags were fluttering wildly. Is there a problem with that? There is a problem. President Juan, you have my gratitude. Your testimony has helped uncover a new contradiction. A contradiction, you say? Yes, one that turns the very foundation of this case on its head. During my investigation, there was no wind at the crime scene, so the flags remained still. However, the flags were actually fluttering in the strong wind. This completely changes the meaning of that piece of evidence. Which evidence contradicts the state of the crime scene? The trajectory! The gunshot rang out during the president's speech. The bullet struck the balloon, and also pierced through the nation's flag. I had previously deduced the bullet's trajectory using these facts. The assassin fired the bullet from the left side of the audience area. However, if the flags were fluttering about like so, my reasoning changes. Oh! Since the flag's position has changed... Correct. The bullet's trajectory must also change. And if we trace the trajectory of the bullet, we can tell who fired the shot. Huh? But, Mr. Edgeworth, that person is... Indeed. I still don't understand why. However, it can be none other than him. By tracing the bullet's path, who was the person who fired the gun? Knightley. But... 
This then raises a question. How in the world was the revolver with two bullets fired from it dumped in the trash can all the way down there? I mean, it could reasonably be planted ahead of time. Absolutely. But... Oh, well, this is easy. Just ask to look at Knightley's gun. We'll inspect his gun, yeah. The person who shot the balloon was none other than you, Horace Knightley. W what? Connect the bullet holes in the balloon and the flag, and the line points to you. Updated data. But that guy's one of the president's bodyguards. Why would he have shot the steel samurai balloon, sir? Preposterous. I agree with the detective. There is no reason. Are you saying Knightley, who has saved my life on numerous occasions, is an assassin? Prosecutor Edgeworth had it up to here with you. My job is to protect the president. Knightley, control yourself. S sorry, sir. Prosecutor, indeed, the wind was strong during my speech. However, the wind's strength can change very quickly. Evidence. Show us evidence that the flag was flying at the moment of the gunshot. The gunshot occurred the moment the president raised his fist to the sky. The evidence that shows this moment is... Do I have something that shows the state of the flag? Let's take a look. Oh god. There's no flag visible. Oh! Wow! That was there the whole time, huh? God damn, really? Wow! Huh. The evidence is in this photo. Interesting. And where in this photo exactly? God, this is so clever. Proof that the flag was flying in this photo is right here. Take that. Don't you see? The fluttering flag can be seen in this photo. N no. There is no mistaking that the flags were flying at the moment of the incident. So, so then, it really was that guy who shot the balloon. That would mean Mr. Knightley is the assassin! Horace Knightley is... Oh, what a curveball this game just threw at me. Is this where I'm supposed to be wise and say not the assassin because the assassin dumped the the gun in the trash? But then who else could it possibly be? I'm... Huh. I... Okay, look, there's just one little hit and I'm at full health. Let's try not the assassin. I'm curious wh where this goes. Horace Knightley is not the assassin. The only thing he shot was a balloon. A balloon on the opposite side of the president. He wasn't aiming at the president. Uh, why then? Why was it necessary for me to do a thing like that? Depending on your answer, I might take aim at you pretty little head. Wow! Is that a threat? Why was it necessary? I presume the reason is connected to the one thing that's felt out of place. The one who shot the balloon was the president's bodyguard, Knightley. That fact will change the entire viewpoint of this case.
Hmm. Did Knightley know that there was a plan to take the president's life? We already know Knightley doesn't tell the president everything. Well, I mean, he said that he didn't think the spare samurai balloon was important enough to tell the president. I would, I would hope he would think uh, telling about an assassination plot would be important enough to say something, you know? This is kind of misleading. Right side of the stage, but from Knightley's position, the balloon would be on his left. He could look to the left. Mm. I guess this kind of connects because, I mean, it's connecting the fact that he was in position to shoot the balloon. Why was Knightley's position changed? Because I can't turn my head to the right. My position got changed to the president's left side. In other words, I was relocated to the right side of the stage. Was that really the only reason? If the plans had not changed and Knightley remained on the left side of the stage, Knightley can't turn his head to the right. Would he have been able to aim at the balloon on the left side of the stage? Perhaps the security plans were altered so that Knightley could shoot the balloon. If that's the case. Oh, maybe it's just that Knightley's a collaborator. What's this? The details of the security plans were changed? Yeah, that's right. It was changed yesterday. The president's orders. The security plans were changed on the president's orders. Did... Did Dijun Huan plan his own assassination? What? In other words, the president knew about the balloon being shot. He knew about the attempt on his own life. If you think about it that way, everything that's been out of place is beginning to add up. Why was the assassin able to get a gun past such tight security? Why was the assassin wearing a conspicuous red hood? Why did they use a laser sight that would so easily reveal their location? Why was the president so calm after being shot? This was the truth the president and his subordinates tried to conceal. There can only be one reason why Knightley fired the gun. The entire assassination was a setup. Huh? Huh? How dare you? Do you seriously understand what you're implying with this? Of course I understand. In fact, now I understand everything. Mr. President, you wish to take the investigation rights from me. That was all so you could conceal the real truth. How dare you mock me with these spurious allegations! Mock you? That was not my intention. I simply used logic to uncover the truth, that is all. Knightley fired the first shot in order to rupture the balloon. 
Hearing the gunshots and the sound of the balloon bursting, the audience began to panic. This was followed by one more shot. Wait! One more shot? Yes. Knightley turned towards the balloon and pulled the trigger a second time. The second gunshot was also fired by Knightley to create the illusion of the second shot hitting the president. So what about the bullet that hit the president's bulletproof vest? What if that bulletproof vest had been prepared in advance? Whoa! What's the matter, Mr. President? Afraid of facing a little bullet? That's not true. I was definitely shot. If we examine the bullet in your vest, it would answer the question for us. Will we find Rook's blood on that bullet? Oh, but the person in the red hood who shot me is in that photo. Weren't you listening, Mr. President? From the bullet's trajectory, the one who fired the shot must have been Knightley. Then, Nicole! She too was part of the President's plan. She was to bear the blame and become the false assassin. The red-hooded figure! Exactly. I don't know how much of the plan Miss Swift knew beforehand. However, she didn't fire the gun. All she did was aim the laser pointer at the president's head. Th that's right! I... Once the crowd began to panic, you would turn your parka inside out. And thus, the red-hooded figure vanished. After that, you discarded the gun and security plan in the trash. Oh, wow. And the illusion of the assassin vanishing like a ghost was complete. And with the assassin gone, the case would go unsolved, pal. Yes, that was what he hoped for. That's why he wouldn't let Mr. Edgeworth investigate the case. Exactly. All of this was an asinine publicity stunt from a lying president. But... you... you... Uh, that's a lot of hot air. <laughs> Could fill a balloon with that. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. I had a little theory I didn't mention that I was like, okay, maybe what if he's not really buff? What if he's just, like, wearing, like, five bulletproof vests that look like muscles under there? This is way better than that, though. <laughs> you... you are wrong. I... He revealed his true form. The assassination is a lie, isn't it? The chief... why did he have to pick you? This should not have happened. Objection! Okay. I theorized earlier that Knightley was more important than he seemed because he has so many unique animations for sprites and all that. You're telling me he has his own objection voice. Oh yeah, this guy's gonna come back in future cases, isn't he? Well played, Mr. Prosecutor. D d d lightly. I am speaking with the President now, thank you very much. You're a chess player. You know knights always strive to protect their king. So shut up now. Are... are you threatening me, Mr. Knightley? Ah, oh, what's with this guy? Oops, sorry. I went over the top there. But on to business. As my first move, I want to ask you a question. 
You say I fired a gun on the stage, right? And I should have been caught. The entire audience was watching me. I see. Now it's my move. You used a certain object to prevent the spectators from seeing you. Yeah, 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 it's the, it's the case. Certain object? What did Knightley use to prevent the audience from seeing him? The attaché case. The attaché case. Exactly. I'd like you to have a look at this photo Kay took. Your right hand is completely hidden by the case. This photo captures the exact moment you secretly fired the gun. You use the attaché case as a screen. Objection! You seem to enjoy making up convenient stories, Mr. Prosecutor. But you've missed something. What have I missed? That everything you've said is just a hypothesis, a theory. Flags flapping in the wind, using the case as a screen. The security plans were modified because I can't move my neck. You've got no decisive evidence. <laughs> yeah, it'd be great if you had the bullet that hit the balloon. Then you could examine it and see if the ballistic markings matched my gun. But that bullet's probably at the bottom of the lake. Finding it would be real tough, right? I hate to admit it, but it's as he says. There's no decisive evidence. If there's no proof, the only thing you can do is shut up. So do so. Uh, Miss Swift. Of, uh, um... That's it. If she speaks, we could hear new testimony. Hey, lady, you got something to say? Ah, uh, never mind. That's witness intimidation. There we go, I thought so. Nicole! Don't be afraid. The truth will escape if you let that man intimidate you. You're a reporter. A journalist, are you not? I... Uh, I will not remain silent! You'd better consider your position. Use your head before saying something you'll regret. I forgot the number one rule of journalism. Journalists must not tell lies. You can't call it a scoop if it ain't the truth. Mr. Edgeworth, I'm sorry. I've been hiding this the whole time. This is? I used this laser pointer to aim at the president. That's all I did. I never fired the gun. <laughs> you stupid woman! If you testify, you'll be admitting you're an accomplice. I... I don't care. I'm gonna tell him everything. Three days ago, I was covering an event at the Genfa Embassy. Then some of the President's men called me over. They said if I cooperated, I'd get an exclusive interview with the President. And the gun in the trash. I really don't know. All I was told was to come wearing a red hood and to aim the laser pointer. I never thought it would snowball into all this. I'm really truly sorry. Nicole, thank you. That was a testimony worthy of the courtroom. This is sufficient testimony to verify the fake assassination plot. D Damn you! A lot of you! They're all a bunch of mindless morons! It's a shame. If only you had been able to usurp the investigation as planned. You would have been able to silence this young lady. Well, careful now. So, tomorrow's headlines now read... Fake assassination plan exposed becomes a murder. Right? I can't believe that you do something this horrible, pal. I admit nothing. The president? Nightly. 
That's enough. We have no choice but to admit it. So, Mr. President, you admit that you planned a fake assassination. Yes, I admit it. I'm sorry. But why? Why did you have to do this? My approval ratings in the Genfa have fallen. I wanted to appeal to them as a strong president who survived an assassination. But in the end, it was just a lie. A stupid lie. <laughs> and the bullet in the bulletproof vest. Prepared earlier, it was not fired today. Okay, but what about the smashed glass and the messed with doll? Hell is that? But what about Mr. De Killer? It seems our plan was leaked. Someone wanted to make this fake assassination real. That's why De Killer wore the red raincoat. He would impersonate the culprit from the plan in order to approach the president. But there's still one thing I don't understand. What's that? Why did Rook die? His death was not a part of this charade. Yet it really happened. Yes. Why was his life taken? Ethan was an outstanding bodyguard. Even though he wasn't from my country, he had my utmost trust. I wouldn't think that having the trust of a cowardly president meant that much, honestly. Ooh! Ooh! K off the top rope! <laughs> hey! That's the same sort of bond between me and Mr. Edgeworth, pal. I wouldn't put it that way. Did Rook know of your plan? Not the exact details. I asked him to cooperate, but he refused. You should have listened to his advice. Yes, indeed. I wouldn't have done all this if I had known. Ugh. Being too dramatic. Wh what? Rook was just one piece of the president's defense. Rightly. But... And it's not as if he cooperated with your plan. I did. He ran away, taking whatever dignity he had left with him. Good riddance. Wow, this guy's an asshole. I know you're a valuable bodyguard, but still... I don't have time for this, sir. I'm the team leader now. There's going to be a lot of changes now that the chicken's gone. After all, adaptation is the most important principle in chess. I knew you always wanted to be the team leader. But, but, wasn't this a little bit imprudent? <laughs> I will orchestrate even more perfect plans just like this one. He says while standing near the dead body. You definitely have ambition. But wasn't your perfect plan today a failure? If it weren't for you and that idiot Rook, it would have been perfect. What did Rook do? If he hadn't died, the killer wouldn't have threatened me. And you would have never set foot on this plane. Rightly, how can you say such a thing? Yeah, he died trying to save you, Mr. President. Maybe he fulfilled his lifelong ambition. He died protecting the President? Huh? But the assassination was fake, right? Of course it was. But you need to listen closer, little girl. No, no, I think I listened close enough. I think he just let something slip. I think Knightley hired the killer. I think he did that. Remember the guy who wanted to make the fake assassination real? There were two gunshots at the time of the incident. The first was, as you said, I shot the balloon. But the second one wasn't me. So who fired the second shot? 
the real assassin. But it wasn't the killer. Oh. But he intended to attack the president with a knife, not a gun. The lucky winner was the hidden queen. Ooh. Or should I say, the lady in the coat over there. Wait, what? You're accusing Nicole, pal? I, I ain't no assassin. Really, I don't believe you. The gun that was left in the trash. That was yours, right? Oh, he's not going down without a fight. Wow. I shot the balloon and entered the plane with Rook and the President. Rook waited in the cabin while I led the President into the security room. When I came out, Rook was already on the ground. The bullet that lady fired must have hit him while we escorted the President to the plane. The shot was fired from the gun you found in the trash. So, you're saying you don't know exactly when the victim was shot? A knight's job isn't to protect the rook. It's to protect the king. Huh? What he's trying to say is that his job was to protect the president only. It's over if you lose the king. Checkmate. That's the first rule of chess. If you let your pieces get taken right in front of you, you're not likely to win. But I did win. Look, the president is safe. <clears throat> Don't claim victory when the game has only just begun. Damn. So, his new testimony here hinges on... Um, Swift firing one bullet. But the gun in the trash had two bullets fired, so what's the deal with that? I shot the balloon and entered the plane with Rook and the President. Hold it. So the victim had no part in your plan. Yeah, that's right. He didn't even know it was all fake. So you're saying he thought it was a real assassination attempt? Oh, but you fired the gun right next to him. Wouldn't he have noticed? Maybe he did. Not that it matters now. Besides, even if he thought the assassination attempt was a fake, his duty was to protect the king. He made a split-second decision to sacrifice himself. The victim was truly a man of honor. You're wrong. It was all part of my plan. He simply assisted in our little performance on stage. Wow. Wow. Even taking credit for that. Wow. Okay, no joke, is Knightley the biggest scumbag in the franchise so far? The sheer level of unrepentant... I don't even know a word strong enough for him. Jeez. This sick horse should be put down. Oh my god. Hmm. Rook waited in the cabin while I led the president into the security room. Why did you do that? The assassination was supposed to be fake. There were a lot of guests milling around outside. Would it be bad if the president, who just escaped an assassination, was seen lounging around and drinking grape juice? Imagine the headlines. Oh, neat callback. Grape juice. What was the victim doing at that time? How should I know? I was with the president inside the security room. Anyway. When I came out, Rook was already on the ground. Where did you find the body? About where he is now. He collapsed in the middle of this room. When I returned, the door to the plane was already closed. The bullet must have hit Rook right before the door closed. In that case, where would the exit wound be? I mean, where would the... 
the impact from the bullet. There, the interior of this cabin is spotless. I mean, except for the floor. The bullet would have passed through Rook's body and hit something, so what got hit? Talk about a hassle. It's all his fault that this plan failed. Lightly, that's too far. Even if he protected the king, he couldn't protect his honor. He was careless in his duty and he paid the price for it. This man is truly despicable. As I was saying, the bullet that lady fired must have hit him while, he we, while we escorted the president to the plane. Weren't you both carrying bulletproof attaché cases? Yeah, when Rook noticed the laser pointer, we opened up those bad boys and became the president's shield. You're telling me the bullet slipped through the space between your shields. Are you claiming that Miss Swift had such precise aim? Well, she was targeting the president. I wouldn't say her aim is precise at all. So the bullet was off target and just happened to hit the victim instead. Through the tiny gap between his bulletproof vest and case. I don't want to believe it either, but they say the truth is stranger than fiction. Rook was hit by a one in a million shot, and you have the evidence to prove it. The shot was fired from the gun you found in the trash. So the second shot wasn't part of your plan. That's right, she did that on her own. If you think about it, wasn't she desperate for a scoop? I'm a journalist, I ain't no murderer. Well then, who was the one who joined the plan in order to get exclusive coverage? Uh, that's... It's just like you said, I orchestrated this fake assassination attempt. She was only supposed to aim the laser pointer. I guess it wasn't enough for her. She prepared her own gun and took aim at the president. She probably thought she wouldn't get caught if she went on and shot me too. Knightley fired the first shot, and then Miss Swift fired the second one. In other words, Nicole also had a gun. I never thought she was the type. Without any proof, it's just pure speculation. Then bam, let's present some evidence. I think I know what to do. It's this one. So you shot the balloon, and Miss Swift shot a rook. Is that really true? I can't see it any other way. The gun we discovered in the trash was fired twice. The number of gunshots don't add up. Why don't the gunshots add up? It's simple. This gun is fake evidence left behind by the real criminal. Fake evidence? Think about it. The criminal planted this for a reason. By finding the gun, we'd assume that the assassin was in the audience. In order to make us believe that the gun was used by the assassin. Oh yeah, now I get the murder. Rook, I mean, Knightley would have killed Rook to secure the top spot on the guard team. Yeah, Knightley was so happy to go on about how now that he's in charge by order of success, succession, he'll be make all the good plans. That's what he has to gain from Rook's murder. Yeah, I think this is open and shut at this point. In order to make us believe that the gun was used by the assassin, the gun needed to appear as if it had been fired twice. I get it, because two shots were fired during the incident. 
However, we proved that the bullet that hit the balloon did not come from this gun. Therefore, I have my doubts as to whether this gun also took Rook's life. <laughs> Here it comes, you're packing some serious heat. Enough with the song and dance, you've come this far, go ahead and say it. I won't just say it, I'll prove it. The one who really shot Rook is... Horace Knightley. Horace Knightley, you murdered Rook. <laughs> you finally said it. Knightley? You couldn't have. The killer wasn't the only one who took advantage of the fake assassination plot. You intended to murder Rook and claim he was a victim of the assassination. Once the president had entered the security room and the door to the plane was closed, only the victim and Knightley would have been left in this room. And at that moment, you fired a third bullet, directly at Rook. Objection! A third bullet. <laughs> only two gunshots were heard. The numbers don't match up. The plane's walls are soundproof. If the door was closed, the gunshot would not have been heard outside. But wasn't the president in the next room? That's true. The president may have heard the gunshot. Mr. President, did you hear a gunshot? Well, I didn't hear any gunshots. But... Weren't you watching this room through the security cameras? Well, the cameras in this room aren't usually turned on. I turned on the power after I entered the security room. So you didn't turn on the power immediately after entering the room? No, actually, I... I... What is it? He's not being clear. Oh, did he go for his stuffed animal for some security? Mr. President, focus. This is vital. I... I... I was... That is, I... Please! I was hiding under the bed, covering my ears. What? But you knew the assassination was fake. It doesn't matter. I simply hate the sound of guns. But however I can sound, I just can't help it. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun voicing this guy. <laughs> well, even Gumshoe thinks he, he's pathetic. G guys, fellas, if if Dick Gumshoe thinks you're a bit pathetic, boy. Definitely ain't going in my article. <clears throat> Knightley, you saw the president hiding under the bed. Furthermore, you could tell if the security cameras had been turned on by looking at the monitors. In that moment, when the president wouldn't hear the gunshot or see the room, you had a chance to fire a third bullet at Rook. Brightly? Did you really? I... deceived me. You really think I killed that moron? That's cold, Mr. President. Have a little faith in me, the bodyguard who's risking his life to protect you. I... I want to believe you, I really do, but... I just don't get it. Why are you suspecting me alone? There's still the possibility that she's the killer. This gun is not the murder weapon. The number of missing bullets makes that clear. Maybe it was one short to begin with. Ever think of that? What? Maybe it already fired a shot yesterday or the day before. And the second shot was fired today. The one that hit Rook. Well, isn't that just a perfect excuse? Excuse? The possibility exists, you can't deny that. He's right. 
I can deny it completely. You need decisive evidence. Evidence so decisive that it makes my heart stop and my logic crumble. You got something like that? Oh. Mr. Edgeworth, can't you do anything? At this rate, Nicole will. Mr. Prosecutor, it's true I did an awful thing for a scoop. But I never killed nobody. I could never do a thing like that. Decisive evidence. If I could prove the murder weapon was Knightley's gun. Proof it was his gun. Yeah, it'd be great if you had the bullet hit the balloon. Then you could examine it and see if the ballistic markings matched my gun. If we can find the bullet that took Rook's life. We can determine which gun fired the shot from the ballistic markings. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. I said, wait, what about the broken glass? What about the damaged stuffed animal? And I also said, wait, but if a bullet was fired into the plane, wouldn't there be a mark? Wouldn't something be destroyed? And I really didn't connect the dots. <laughs> If you've got no evidence, then we're done talking. Objection! Hold it. What? You don't seriously have decisive evidence. <laughs> Naturally. That's a big joke. Well, come on now, show us. What is the so-called evidence? The bullet that took Rook's life. That's the decisive evidence I need. This evidence... Do I have it? I mean... It's not in my evidence, but... I can go get it. One monitor is missing. I, okay, well, it's in this. I'll just say yes and go for it. I have the bullet right, uh, here somewhere. If the canary doesn't sing, just shoot it, or so the saying goes. Uh, wow! Just as I hoped, I'm gonna blast a hole in ya. Right in your chest. Meow! <laughs> Rook was killed here, so where did the bullet go? Come to think of it, there's one thing in this room that's always felt out of place. I don't have it yet. I don't have it. Okay, okay, it's game over, man. However, it is somewhere in this room. What? The bullet that killed Rook pierced through his body. So where did the bullet go? Earlier, you explained it like this. The bullet that took Rook's life pierced through his body and then hit the vest. That's right. It'd be dangerous if he hadn't worn that bulletproof vest. However, now that the fake assassination plan has come to light, we know that the bullet in the bulletproof vest was prepared earlier. So then, where did the bullet go? Interesting. Very interesting. Do you have the answer? Do I have evidence that shows the location of the bullet that killed Mr. Rook? Yeah, right here. In this room, there is one thing that's clearly missing. Something missing? You sure it's not your brain? I'd like you to look at the rack of security monitors. Oh! It seems you've noticed, Mr. President. Among these images of the plane's surroundings, only the feed from the right side of the plane is absent. That's what's missing. A single monitor. Grrr. Mr. President, there was originally a monitor here, wasn't there? That's right. Why is there a stuffed toy now? 
and that it must have been put there to hide the empty space where the monitor used to be. Why is the monitor missing and where did it go? Why? Undoubtedly because it was hit by the bullet. In order to make us think that the bullet really hit the bulletproof vest. It would be a problem if another bullet hole was discovered. So then, where did the monitor go? Where? It should be hidden somewhere inside this plane. There hasn't been a chance to dispose of it outside since it was shot. Detective Gumshoe, search this plane. Roger that, sir. President Wand, you said extraterritorial laws apply to this plane? I will allow it, there is no problem. I just want to know the truth of Rook's death. Damn it! You think this is a joke? You're always like this. Rook this, Rook that. Detective, we have his approval. Go ahead. Oh boy! Oh man, look at that overall sprite. Oh, his belly's exposed. It's hanging out. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, I found it, sir. Good work, detective. Now, let's extract the bullet from the monitor. Um, if I do this here and then do that, I, I got it. Well, it's definitely stained with blood. I'm certain this is the bullet that killed Rook. This is the bullet that will crush your arguments. The decisive evidence that blows a hole in your logic. If the ballistic markings on this bullet do not match the gun found in the audience area, Miss Swift will be cleared of suspicion. What's wrong? Cat's got your tongue? Detective, we need to examine the ballistic markings. Send the gun and bullet to forensics. Roger, we should be able to find clear markings on this bullet, sir. Now then, let's listen to the forensics report. Reporting. First, the blood on this bullet matches the victim's blood. So, this bullet really did take Rook's life. Also, Horace Knightley's fingerprints were found on this gun. Knightley's fingerprints probably came from when he took all our evidence. The real issue is the ballistic markings. If the markings don't match, Miss Swift will be cleared of suspicion. And the bullet's ballistic markings match this gun. Well, crap. What? They match? What? No way! There is no mistake, the bullet was fired from this gun. What? <laughs> That's strange. Looks like I was right after all, naturally. Did you really think you, could, you had me cornered? You misread the board. The one who's been cornered is you. Oh, damn. You know what? I think... I think we are, like, this close. I'm, like, holding up my fingers here, my finger and thumb. We're, like, this close to finishing this case. I'm okay with going a bit overboard on time. Let's do this. If the ballistic markings match the gun, there can be no doubt. The bullet that killed Rook was fired from the gun you found in the audience area. Who could have used the gun? Not me, because I was on stage. But what about that lady reporter in the audience? All the evidence points to that young lady as the assassin who killed Rook. Well, it's your move, Mr. Prosecutor. Where did you find this gun again? And which gun fired the bullet? At least we know. It ain't me. <clears throat> this can't be happening. 
The President and I have admitted to the fake assassination plot. Now it's your turn to admit who the real criminal is. That doesn't make Nicole the criminal. Don't get riled up, Kay. Let him have his say first. After he's done, it won't be too late to begin our counterattack. All right, Mr. Edgeworth. If the ballistic markings match the gun, there can be no doubt. No, that's... Didn't she say it earlier? This is the decisive evidence. Well, how does it feel to have a hole blown through your reasoning? The ballistic markings match the gun we found, so... Does that mean Nicole really was the shooter? I'd like to believe otherwise. But he's got the decipher's evidence on his side, sir. Hmm, indeed. How should I proceed? If Miss Swift isn't the killer, then the ballistic markings should not match. Thoughts, Kay? Um, if the evidence is impossible, then maybe we should doubt the evidence itself, right? Doubt the evidence? Nicole's definitely not a criminal. So if the evidence says that she's a criminal, there must be something wrong with it. You seem awfully sure of yourself. It's a great thief's intuition. Intuition? Still, it's quite possible. Above all, Miss Swift doesn't seem like the type of person to tell such elaborate lies. <clears throat> In court, the evidence is everything, and yet, here I am, doubting it. Which evidence do I doubt? Oh! Oh, right, yeah, oh, gee, oh, oh, oh so obvious. Knightley had all the time in the world to take a bullet out of his revolver and, um, dab it in the victim's... Oh, wait. No, Knightley wouldn't have been bleeding at that point. Wait. Oh, no, it, it still works. He could have... He could have shot Rook with his own gun. Um, removed the bullet from the monitor, taken a bullet, dabbed it in the victim's blood, and fired it from Rook's own gun into the monitor. Or, uh, uh wait, hmm. Okay, I thought I had something going, but now I don't think it's too likely. But the gun... Let's try the bullets, though. Could there be something strange about the bullet? Detective, did you do anything to the bullet when you first discovered it? Huh? Like what, sir? I don't know. Like, step on it? Or perhaps fall on it? Terrible, sir. You're terrible, Mr. Edgeworth! <laughs> oh, I'm glad I saw that! My ears! <laughs> okay. The bullet was only just found. Not even Gumshoe could have bungled it that fast. Well, uh, my theory was that something was tampered before it was fired, but... I should doubt... Neither. Oh. None of the evidence seems particularly doubtful. Um, are you sure? Well, your prosecutor's badge seems a little doubtful to me. Ooh! Oh, that's good! <laughs> Could be a fake. That'd explain the poor job you're doing here. <laughs> it, it's too early to draw conclusions. I 
don't have enough information yet. Knightley, continue with your testimony. Please, tell me about the bullet and the gun. Hey, hold on, hold on. Hold on, go back. I need to doubt the gun. Rewind... the gun. If anything suspect here, it can only be the gun. The bullet was discovered just a moment ago. It couldn't have been tampered with yet. Did Knightley have a chance to tamper with the gun? You shall hand over all the evidence you've collected so far and leave this plane at once. <gasps> he made a swap! He made a swap! <gasps> Yahoo! Hey, Mr. Prosecutor, be a good boy and do as you're told. Ugh. I cannot resist any longer. That's it. He tampered with he could have tampered with a gun at that time. There's no doubt that this gun is the real murder weapon. In that case, the owner of this gun is uh, Knightley. He must have switched the guns. Without a doubt, this is Knightley's own gun. Ah, but now with this new evidence in hand, we need to find the contradiction. The bullet that killed Rook was fired from the gun you found in the audience area. No, it was not. It's Knightley's own revolver. Objection! Knightley, you fiend. You switched the guns. The gun that matched the ballistic markings was yours all along. <laughs> Interesting choice of move you've made there. The switch occurred at the time you seized the evidence. When we were arguing with the president over the investigation rights. You detached the laser sight from the gun found in the audience area and attached it to your gun. Then, when you returned the evidence, you gave me your own gun. <laughs> Did I do that? So, what you're saying is that I knew you'd want to examine the ballistic markings. Indeed. Staying one move ahead of your opponents, isn't that the fundamental rule of chess? I'm glad you feel that way, Mr. Prosecutor. But you're giving me too much credit. Besides, can you even prove I pulled the old switcheroo with the guns? Uh-oh. So the gun happens to be the same model as mine. Pure coincidence. But take a closer look. Only one of them has a laser pointer attached to it. Check the number of bullets left in the chamber. Only two shots fired, see? There's no evidence that I switched the guns, right? Giving you too much credit. That hardly sounds like something you'd say. Guess I'm just more modest than you. Well, except when I'm in front of a chessboard. <laughs> but we're not in front of a chessboard. That's too bad. Don't use that as an excuse later. I didn't lose the game. I just couldn't find enough evidence. You're the one who should have an excuse ready. You didn't beat me at chess. You only found the evidence. God, these two are so pretentious. So the gun happens to be the same as mine. Pure coincidence. Coincidence, you say. Or perhaps it was simply bound to happen. Which was it, pal? Us bodyguards needed to use them to protect the president. And no matter how you slice it, that lady is a total amateur with guns. It was necessary for both of us to use revolvers. 
A revolver? Like the one Nightly's carry? Why would it be necessary? It has a simpler mechanism, so it's easier to use. Something along those lines, probably. When you gotta get the job done, or if you're new to this sort of thing, there's nothing better. The truth is, I thought it was pure coincidence all along. But, take a closer look. Only one of them has a laser pointer attached to it. You attach the laser pointer to the gun yourself. Oh yeah? Prove it. Show me the evidence. Uh, well, that's... You can't go around calling people liars without proof. Didn't your daddy teach you that? Ooh. It's not often that... Uh... Wow, what was his name? Uh, it's, not, it's not often that uh, uh, Miles' father is brought up. Even indirectly. On that point, I've got evidence on my side. Check the number of bullets left in the chamber. Only two shots fired, see? Something's been bothering me for a while now. What about the chamber of your own gun? My woman here? Now that you mention it. I mean, we saw him reload it earlier. I've been firing it off for a while now. Oh, there it goes again. Uh -huh. Every time he fires, he reloads the gun. So there's no way to check its status from the time of the incident. That's it. In order to switch the guns, he would have needed to reload the bullets. Knightley is barehanded. He had no time to put on gloves when the switch was made. Well, I think it's about time for you to resign. How about it, Prosecutor Edgeworth? There's no evidence that I switched the guns, right? Um, fingerprints, right? Um... Something was updated to say it had Knightley's bullet, uh, finger, fingerprints on it. Right? Hold on here. If it's evidence, there isn't any. If there is, show it to me. We know there is, pal. Don't we, Mr. Edgeworth? There is no time for another investigation. I can only use what I have right now. Think. Consider all the possibilities. <laughs> if you've got something to show, let me know. Evidence that Nightly switched the guns? Does that even exist? There's no evidence that directly proves that Nightly switched the guns. Yet, we know for a fact he did. If he, if he didn't, there would be no explanation for the ballistic markings. I need to carefully consider the meaning behind every piece of evidence linked to his testimony. The truth must be there. Okay. Evidence that he switched the guns. Would it just be his revolver? The fingerprints on the bullets in the revolver, or do we just go for the bullet itself? No, there... The... The test was run on this. No fingerprints were found on the bullet, I think. Objection. There we go. That evidence is this. You call that evidence. Prosecutor Edgeworth, you're trying too hard. Certain traces were left on this gun. Traces that prove this gun belongs to you. Show it to me. What kind of piece you got? A rook, a bishop, 
It better not be a pawn. The traces Knightley left on the gun are... The fingerprints. You left your fingerprints on this gun. Fingerprints? <laughs> that should be expected. I handled the gun earlier when I seized your evidence. Of course my fingerprints are on it. But what if the fingerprints are in a place they should not be? What? Uh, that's not possible. Allow me to show you. There is one place where your fingerprints should not be. This piece of evidence will deal the final blow to your king. The bullets. Here, Detective Gumshoe, please have a look at the cylinder. Two shots were fired, sir, but where would the fingerprints be? On the bullets. You made the switch when you seized the evidence earlier. However, if all you did was switch the guns, you would have been found out right away. That's because the number of bullets fired by the two guns are different. The gun found in the audience area has fired two shots, sir. Then, what about Mr. Knightley's gun? He fired two shots at the balloon when he was on the stage. And later, one shot to kill Rook. Three shots in total, not counting the number of shots he's fired since then. And after each of those times, you would reload the bullet. Tell us, Knightley, were you wearing gloves when doing that? <laughs> Officer, in your report earlier, where were Knightley's fingerprints found on the gun? Uh, sir, the prints weren't just found on the outside of the gun. They were also found on the bullets as well. If all you did was handle the evidence, why would your fingerprints be on the bullets? That's... With this, it has been proven that you switched the guns. The gun which fired the bullet that took the victim's life. It belongs to you, Horace Knightley. You're the one who stole Rook's life. You are the true assassin. I... 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 I'm... Checkmate. Oh, oh, my, oh my throat. <laughs> what the hell did I just witness? Uh, I, I should have been made leader. Me. Rook, that piece of scum. If it hadn't been for him... I would have had complete control over everybody. My assassination plan, it was perfect. My plan was perfect. Detective Gumshoe, if you please. Roger that, sir. Edgeworth! This game isn't over yet, you hear me? I... I... That's enough. The rest of this game will continue in the courtroom. Damn it! Damn you! Well, look at that. You have my gratitude. You exposed a murderer amongst my bodyguards, and for that I am truly in your debt. As soon as he stepped outside the plane, he reverted back to his king-like persona. 
Some time ago, when I proposed the fake assassination plan. You want me, and not Rook? Rook declined, so I'm asking you. What do you say? Alright, let's do this. I'll come up with the perfect plan. I can even use that guy as a chess piece. When Knightley said that, his eyes were overflowing with hatred towards Rook. Frankly, I was quite anxious about asking Knightley instead of Rook. Now that I recall those events, he probably sensed the anxiety in my countenance. Perhaps that is what gave him the impetus for murder. Mr. President, if you had not orchestrated that fake plan, this would not have happened. That is your sin. A sin that won't disappear. Yes, you are absolutely correct. You have my sincerest apologies. I too must bear some responsibility for this. Even so, I am most grateful to you. I thank you for solving the mystery of Rook's death. I am scheduled to stay in this country for a little longer. But if any of you ever wish to visit the Republic of Genfa, you will always be welcome. Oh, Lottie! Thank you, thank you, thank you! I'm so happy for you, Nicole! You are set up as the suspect for the murder. Still, your involvement with the fake assassination plan remains a fact. You will have to submit to police questioning later. You should know that there's still a possibility you may be charged with some crime. Yeah, I know. Sorry about all this. I understand you want to catch a scoop, but there is a line that should not be crossed. I hear ya. I promise to reflect on this. We did it, Mr. Edgeworth. That was awesome. Prosecutor Edgeworth solves presidential assassination attempt. It's gonna be big news. B big news? <laughs> Mr. Prosecutor, would you mind telling us how you feel about solving this case? That was certainly a quick change of attitude. No comment. Ah, uh, don't be so ornery. The reason is because this case is not over yet. Huh? Not over? What do you mean, sir? What shows that this case is not over yet? A loose end left behind. Take that! De Killer's card! De Killer still hasn't carried out his request. You mean, killing the president? I hope this doesn't turn into a larger incident. Narrator's voice. It turns into a larger incident. An assassination attempt on the president of Genfa. News of this incident spread across the entire country. The mass media also hounded me as I began to prepare for the trial of Horace Knightley. Everyone had seen the news, and everyone was talking about it. However, amidst the commotion, nobody noticed that the game had only just begun. Hot diggity damn. Imprisoned turnabout. That is... Interesting. Imprisoned turnabout. Oh my god, could it be set in a... in a prison? Oh my god, could there be convicts from previous games that were found guilty? Dude, I think I, I once said that I wanted like a, a, like a case set in a prison where every suspect was, an, was a proven murderer from an old game. Oh my god, dude, what if? What if? Oh boy, okay, wait, um... Yeah, wow, okay, wow, holy... So, case one of Prosecutor's Path here... 
was pretty goddamn good. This game was firing on all cylinders right out of the gate. That was some good old Ace Attorney goodness. Mm. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Just what a strong case. Like, especially for an intro tutorial. My God, that... Wow, that was good. Wow, that was good, man. <laughs> so... I definitely feel like there's... Someone out there, someone hired the killer... I feel like that might be the end game big bad of this, you know? Um Huh. Yeah, just like how in the previous game, saying this as spoiler free as I can manage, the previous game was kind of about solving a smuggling ring. And it did end up going to the final big bad of that as it would naturally appear so this it's opening with an assassination attempt to try and destabilize a foreign country is this going all the way to the top is is my question i suppose only time will tell um yeah good strong characters like God, this was an example of peak Ace Attorney, this case. I love it. I just, it was good. It was good. And it's just beginning. Like, this is the least complex case in the game. Ooh. Oh, man, I'm hyped. Anyway, this video has gone on quite enough, and I really could just sit here gushing for hours. So, <laughs> I'm Zephyr the Jester. This has been more Ace Attorney Investigations 2. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll catch you next time when we begin um, Imprisoned Turnabout. That was a thing I, I think it said. Yeah, until then, please take care.